It is a wonderful day to welcome you here to worship everyone, brothers, sisters, friends, guests. Thank you for joining us today, for bringing, for coming together to worship our Lord and Savior today. I'm Pastor Corey Conrad. I pastor at the Coopersville United Methodist Church, and, and I also pastor here in this online medium. And I'm so thankful that you've chosen today to, to take time out of your day to worship God. The Holy Spirit is with us. The Holy Spirit is, is, is God connecting us in spirit to him and to one another in this time. So take a few seconds right now to center yourself, to be aware of the presence of the Holy Spirit in your midst. And that same Holy Spirit that is in your midst is, is here with me and is, is with our friends and, and all of those who are watching and worshiping with us today. I want to encourage you this morning to grab your Bible, um, grab, you know, your physical Bible. If, if you know where it's at, go grab it off the shelf or the table or whatever, or, or take a few moments to open up the Bible app on your phone. Uh, we're going to dig into some word, uh, some scripture today, and I want to invite you all to actually have the word open in front of you so that we all can read this together and work through this together. So we're going to start by worshiping through song here in just a second. So go ahead and take that time during this opening song to find your Bible, get it ready, open it up to the Psalms. We're going to be in Psalm 42 today. Let's go ahead and uh, open up with prayer and then worship our Lord. Would you pray with me? Precious God, we thank you today for this chance to worship you. We thank you for the gift of technology, for the opportunity that we have to worship in many places, but still with one spirit. We thank you for the gift of your word, for the opportunity to praise. And most of all, Lord, we thank you for your gift of loving us, for redeeming us, and for restoring us to a new life in you. Be with us as we praise you today. May you be glorified and honored through all that we say and all that we do. And it's in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ that all God's people pray together. Amen. Let's worship.
Amen. It is a good day when we can worship God through song and through hearing of his word and all the other parts that we're going to get to do today as we worship. I want to start off with just a few announcements for you. The first off is, is we have a new Bible study starting this week, and it's an online Bible study. So wherever you're at, whether you're here in Coopersville or you're spread out throughout this country or even maybe this world, you can engage in this online Bible study we're doing. It's through our Facebook page or it's through a special Facebook page. And we are doing a study um, on 52 Hebrew words every Christian should know. This is a really great opportunity to dig into a little bit of the, the Hebrew language, you know, the language that the Old Testament was written in, the language that Jesus himself spoke. We're going to learn a little bit about these words and how uh, understanding them in their original context helps to give more beauty and more depth to the Word of God. So if you're interested in joining this Bible study, comment below, let me know there, or get a hold of me um, at Pastor Corey at CoopersvilleUMC.org, and I'll get you connected with this Facebook group. Um, like I said, this starts tomorrow, but you can really engage at any point. It's not a scheduled time during the week. There'll just be a video posted each week, and there'll be discussion questions that you can engage in in the group. So if you're interested in that, make sure you let me know. Secondly, um, this week we're going to do another Be the Church Challenge. We've been doing these for the past six weeks now, giving you a, a challenge to go deeper in your practice of faith. And this week, with all the distrust and disdain that seems to be multiplying in our world today, our Be the Church Challenge is a challenge, that off, or a challenge to offer the world a different narrative. A different take on what's happening. There are so many that are, are expressing hatred towards those that are in any position of leadership because they don't like the decisions they're making. There are those that are expressing contempt for those who are, are in positions of, of service where they're not liking the job that they're doing or they're casting dispersions upon everything that's being done just because of assumptions that are being made. And what I want to challenge us to do this week is instead of expressing disdain, let us share encouragement. Now, specifically, our Be the Church challenge for this week is for you to encourage someone who is faithfully leading and serving in this time. This could be anybody. This could be somebody who's leading in your church. This could be somebody who's leading in your community. Maybe this is some um, police officers you know, or maybe this is doctors that you know, or, or frontline workers. Maybe it's a, a family member who is stepping up in a new and unique way. Maybe it's it's people that are facing a lot of uh of political stress, um, people that are, are getting um, a lot of um, nasty commentary in the public. You know, I don't know what it is. I don't know who it is, but I know that there are many who are faithfully leading and serving in this time that are finding it so difficult because they're all they're facing is hatred and disdain. As the church, let's offer a different narrative, like I said, and let us be encouragers. So get a hold of them, send them a text, write them a letter, whatever you need to do to encourage them in the name of Jesus to continue faithfully leading and serving this week and into the future. Let's be the church together. Now we're going to come to a time of offering and our offering is a sacred act of worship. This is where we respond to the blessings of God by offering back to him some of what we've been given for the work of ministry in and through our church. Now, I know that I'm not the only one to realize over these past few months just how blessed we are, how much God has been working for our good in the midst of all things. Amen. And so in this time of offering, I want to invite you to give back to God, trusting him to use what you give to him for the good of not only yourself, but the good of our church, our community and this world. You can give your offering today by sending a check in the mail to our, our church building at 105 North 68th Ave here in Coopersville, Michigan, 49404. Or you can go on to our online giving portal at coopersvilleumc.org slash online dash giving. And there you'll be taken through the whole process of doing your giving in a safe and secure way online. Our, our offering, our giving, helps to provide for a physical location, our building, and all of the bills and, and things that come with that. It helps to provide for our staff who are working diligently to maintain our ministries, even in this crazy time. 
it works or it goes to help support ministries like Coopersville Cares and Area Food Pantries. It helps to support ministries of, of missionaries throughout this world. It's It's been helping to support disaster relief in the middle of Michigan with the floods that happened a few weeks ago. And, and it, it goes in many different ways to reach God, reach people with God's love, physically, spiritually, emotionally, all sorts of different ways. So I want to thank you today for giving, for trusting God and allowing him to use your resources to do his great work in this world. Our God is good. And I thank you for trusting in him and trusting your church. So at this time, let's continue worshiping through another song this morning. you were able to grab your Bibles this morning so that we can dig into God's word today. And I, I got to tell you, you know, this, this time of, of quarantine, of isolation, stay safe, where 2020 has gone from a year of, of excitement to just a year of insanity. I really, I, I really have been struggling this week. I, I was in the car with my husband earlier this week on, on Tuesday or Wednesday, and, and I shared with him that you know, I'm to the point, I just don't know what to preach anymore. I, I'm, I'm tired. I'm worn out. I'm weary of thinking what's going to come next because every time we've been saying that this year, something crazier seems to come next. It seems like all of our worst fears are being answered this year and I don't know what to do in the midst of that. A lot of preachers that I'm seeing are, are offering, um, uh, really great sermon series. Uh, some of them are offering really great how to, some of them are offering not so great things. And, and in the midst of just so much information coming in and so many things happening in our world, I just, I don't know what to do. And, uh, my husband, the genius that he is, he says, well, what if you just preach on that? He's like, there's, there's so many places throughout the scripture that speak to that the lostness, the hunger, the, the feeling of, of not being close to God, of not knowing what to do. And yeah, he was right. You know, throughout scriptures, we find these stories of, of human beings who are real, just like us, right? These aren't just made up literary uh, characters. These are stories of real people like you and I, 
living real lives and going through real difficult times. And so as we're, you know, going through the scriptures, there are so many stories of people who had a difficult time, who were struggling, who were wondering where was God in all of this, who, who didn't know what to do next and who were longing for the good old days. Does it sound familiar at all? And as I was, was looking through the scriptures, you know, I, I was brought back again and again to the Psalms, right? The Psalms are, are the hymn book of the Old Testament, of the Bible. These are, this was the songs that the people sang. These were the songs that Jesus himself would have sang and known from the time that he was a little tyke. And throughout these Psalms, you know, some of them are really hopeful. Some of them are, are wonderful things that we would have not a problem at all singing in our churches today. But some of them are, are downright depressing as well. Some of them are confusing. Um, and some of them are really long. Some of them don't seem to have anything to do with our lives today. And there's such a variety in here. And the beauty of the Psalms as a songbook is that they cover the whole gamut of human experience and human emotion. We find people who are going through very real times in their lives and they're honest with God. They're honest because they're able to say, God, where are you? God, I don't feel you. How have you, why have you forsaken me, Lord? You know, all of these times where it seems like, well, it seems like from us, from our good Christian perspective, that it's wrong <laughs> to, to talk this way to God. And yet this is the example we get. And so when, when we have times where we just don't know what to do, where we're overwhelmed, where we're frustrated, where we're just so tired, the truth is that this, the Psalms, the scriptures speak to those feelings. So as I was going through the Psalms this week, I, I, I was stuck by, struck by Psalm 42. So if you have your Bibles, go ahead and turn to Psalm 42. It's, it's just about halfway through your Bible, okay? Um, and Psalm 42 is not a long one. There's 11 verses here, right? It says, um, I have a note here in my Bible that says it was uh, for the choir director. This is a Psalm of the descendants of Korah. Now, Korah was one of those guys that was in the wilderness wandering with the Hebrew people as they came out of Egypt. And Korah tried to start a rebellion and it did not go well. Um, uh, it, it actually was quite bad, and a lot of people ended up dying because of this rebellion of Korah. But his descendants learned from his bad example. And his descendants actually became uh, powerful leaders and, and faithful followers of God, um, so much so that, that they wrote a handful of psalms that we still have um, evidence of today in, in our Bibles. And so this is one of those first psalms that were written by the descendants of Korah. And I want to just take a few minutes for us to walk through these 11 verses and, and to talk about them. And, and, and what I want to invite you to do is as we're reading through this, to hear it as it's your own words, right? To, to truly engage with what's being said here, not to read it as, as like it's some research project, but read this as it's a manifestation maybe of, of even where you're at or where you've been at some point in your life. So he starts off in, in verse one by saying, as the deer longs for streams of water. Uh, now, let me just clarify real quick, you know, all the different translations of the Bible. I'm reading out of the New Living Translation. You may have a different translation you have opened and, and that's okay. It may read just a little differently, but the, the content and the context is still the same. So he starts by saying, as the deer longs for streams of water. Right. We we know that wild animals that God provides for them and and we here in Michigan are very aware of deer. Right. We see them all the time. Um, in fact, yesterday I was driving through town and there's this field by a factory here in town that usually is covered with geese. And we were driving along and all of a sudden there's a deer running through the middle of the uh, field and it quite caught me off guard. Um, but he was running towards the creek, right? Um, I don't know if he was running toward get a drink, but I, I, I want to imagine that's what he was doing. He was desperate for that stream of water for that drink. He says, so as, as the deer longs for streams of water, so I long for you, God. 
Now, this longing isn't just a, hey, I would really, really like to have that. You know, like my dream for a Camaro one day. I would really, really like to have that. But that's not longing, right? That's just dreaming. Uh, wishful thinking, as it were. But this longing, it, it's a desperation. It's, it's a deep, passionate desire. Uh, it's a need, in fact, right? We know that, that animals need water and God provides that through flowing water and streams and ponds and things like that. So as that deer longs for that water, so I long for God. I need God. I'm desperate for him. In fact, he goes on in verse two to say, I thirst for God, the living God. Have you ever been so thirsty? thirsty like you were just dry mouth parched maybe even coughing right you ever had those times and and the one thing you needed more than anything at that time was what it was something to drink right you didn't need somebody stopping by and asking if you were okay you didn't need somebody trying to lecture you you didn't need uh, a self-help book or anything like that right no you needed a drink of water and the writer of this psalm says i, I thirst for for God. I need God, the living God. Not any of those other idols, not any of those other things that the world tries to give me. I need the living God. And he says, where can I go to find him, to stand in his presence? Where can I go to encounter this God? He says, day and night, I have only tears for food. Right? He's describing here a desperate situation. This writer is, is overwhelmed by what's going on in his life. He says he's to the point that, that tears are all he has left. That his emotions are so frayed that all he can do is cry. Now, I don't know, maybe you're, you're one of those who say, well, I don't cry. I'm a manly man and we don't cry. And first off, that's bupkis. But we all do understand this desperation and this, this loneliness that comes from being apart from God. And we felt this, right? I know many people have struggled in this time when we can't meet together in our buildings because we long for that, right? We, we value, we're desperate for that community, that being together in the place of worship. And we've struggled to learn how to worship on our own. Now, I'll just tell you that that's an important thing, and we have to learn how to do that. And if you're struggling to learn how to worship on your own at home, please get with me because I would be happy to give you some advice and some guidance to help you with that. But he says, day and night, I, I have only tears for food while my enemies are constantly taunting me saying, where is this God of yours? I don't, I don't know if you've heard it or not lately, but I have definitely heard it in, in our world today, in our, in our, our country. Uh, I've heard people saying, where is God in all of this? If God was such a good God, why would he allow people to die from a virus like this? If God was such a good God, why would he allow rioting? Why would he allow the sin of racism? Why would he allow this? Why would he do this? Why, why, why? Where? is God. And as a good Christian, we would all be the first to say, well, of course God is there. God is everywhere. God is in this. Just have hope, right? That's what we want to say. But if we're honest with ourselves, if we're honest, sometimes we're there too. Sometimes we ask, where are you, God? We struggle to find him in our circumstances. We doubt that he's working because everything we're seeing definitely isn't good, even though he promises to work all things together for the good of those who love him. The writer goes on and, and see, we're connecting deeper with what he's saying because we get it. He says, my heart is breaking. Raise your hand if your heart has been broken over these last few months with what's happened. Even more so in the past few weeks. My heart is breaking as I remember how things used to be, he says. I walked among the crowds of worshipers, leading a great procession to the house of God, singing for joy and giving thanks amid the sound of great celebration. He remembers what it used to be like to go to church, 
to worship on a Sunday, to, to have that celebration and that joy that comes with being with the people of God. And he longs for that. And it breaks his heart that he can't have that right now. And we don't know why, what, what's, we don't know what's going on in this author's life to make him write this. We don't know what's going on in the culture and everything like that. But we know we can connect with this. We get this, don't we? We understand this longing to be with God's people in God's place. He goes on even. Why am I discouraged? Why is my heart so sad? How about you? Why, why are you discouraged today? What is it that's making your heart sad? I'm, I'm sure if, if we were together and we were able to share out loud, we would get so many different things. We would hear about the COVID virus. We would hear about people dying. We would hear about government overreach. We would hear about racism and police brutality. We would hear about fears and riots. We would hear about um, the uh, recession and people losing jobs. We would hear about loneliness and depression. We would hear about all the things that are going on in our world that have just been, I don't know, it seems like they've been magnified over the past few months, doesn't it? Because they've been all been put together in, in a short amount of time. And it seems like every day brings a new crisis. Why am I so discouraged? Well, duh. Just look around. Why is my heart so sad? I miss what we had before. I, I long to be in the presence of God with the people of God and the place of God. But he answers these questions. Why am I discouraged? Why is my heart so sad? Not by listing the negative, but by saying what he's going to do. And what is he going to do? I will put my hope in God. I will praise him again as my savior and my God. I will praise him as my savior and my God. I will put my hope in God. He says, now I am deeply discouraged, but I will remember you, God. See, what he's saying here is that even in the midst of, of heartbreak, even in the midst of this desperate longing and discouragement and sadness of his heart, he's not going to stay there. He's not going to allow that to be his story. But instead, I will put my hope in God. I will praise him. I will remember him. See, when we are going through those desperate times in life, we have a choice. That choice is to dwell in the midst of that or to move forward. Are we going to dwell in the midst of our sadness and disappointment and discouragement? Or are we going to move forward, putting our hope in God, putting our trust in him, remembering who God is? So he says in verse 7, I, I hear the raging seas. I, I hear the tides sweeping over me. All of the, the craziness and chaos of this world, it's all around me. But, he says in verse 8, Each day the Lord pours out his unfailing love upon me. And through each night I sing his songs and praying to God who gives me life. This is how the writer of this psalms combats the discouragement of life by remembering that each day God pours his unfailing love upon us by singing songs and praying by crying out oh my oh God my rock and, and he shares the frustrations right he says why have you forgotten me why must I wander around in grief oppressed by my enemies their taunts break my bones they scoff where is this God of yours Right? He's honest. He says, God, this is where I'm at. This is what I'm feeling. I can't handle this anymore. But you are still God. You are the God who every day pours unfailing love upon me. And then he ends this, this psalm by repeating this chorus that, that we saw in verse 5. Why am I discouraged? Why is my heart so sad? I will put my hope in God. 
I will praise him. I will praise him again, my Savior and my God. What about you? What about me? <laughs> you know, it doesn't seem like the world's going to get any better anytime soon. We're, we're to the point where we're afraid to ask what's going to happen next. But let us take a page from this book. Pardon the pun. Let, let us learn from the descendants of Korah. Let, let's be honest with God about our desperation and our longing, about our discouragement and defeat. And in the midst of that, let's put our hope in God and praise him again and again as our Savior and our God. Don't forget that. Remind yourself of that. Remind each other of that. Encourage one another with that reality. That even though it seems like every day brings another wave of chaos. Every day the Lord pours his unfailing love upon you. Every day God is with you. Don't forget that. Amen. In Psalm 55, the writer says, Give your burdens to the Lord and he will take care of you. He will not permit the godly to slip and fall. As we enter into a time of prayer this morning, I, I implore you to give your burdens to God. Right? As our, our writer in Psalm 42 did, he, he was honest with God, right? He laid it out before God. This is where I'm at, God. This is what I'm going through. This is how I'm feeling. Even how I'm feeling about you, Lord. So, so let's take some time to be honest with God this morning. Wherever you're at, whatever you're going through. But just as, as the writer of the Psalms leads us, we're going to turn that burden, those burdens over to God in praise. To trust him, to rely on him fully. So I'm going to start us off in prayer and then I'm going to open it up. The time of silence for you to pray to God yourself. And then I'll bring us back together and, and lead us in that prayer and, and, and lead us then in, in the Lord's prayer. As we'll cover one another in prayer today, we'll lift ourselves up, we'll lift our world up, and we'll turn to God praising him in all situations. So let us pray. Great and holy God, we come before you today as a broken people. In a world that is desperately broken. There are so many burdens right now, Lord. So many things that are going on. It seems just like chaos after chaos. We take this time out of our lives today. To come to you, to pray to you, to give you our burdens, to be honest with you. And so, Father, I ask that you would hear us now, each of us, as we lift up to you in prayer our burdens, our lives, our struggles, and our world. Have mercy on us, O oh God. We look to you for protection. We hide beneath the shadow of your wings. We cry out to you, O oh God Most High. We know that you are the God who will fulfill your purposes in us. We trust that you will send help from heaven for us to rescue us. God, we know that each day you pour out your unfailing love and faithfulness upon us. Help us to not get bogged down in our struggles and in the wave after wave of, of chaos that comes. But no matter what comes, Lord, let us turn to you <clears throat> to praise you, to put our hope solely and fully in you, Lord God, 
You are the great God of heaven. You are to be exalted, Lord. Through our lives, may you be glorified. May our hearts find confidence in you, Lord, so that we can sing your praises no matter what. We thank you, Lord, among all the people of this world. We thank you and we sing your praises. For your unfailing love is as high as the heavens and your faithfulness reaches to the clouds. God, may you be glorified in your people and through your people into this world. Hear us now, Lord, as we pray those words that Jesus, our Savior, taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. God, God is good. And, and what we just did there is we prayed some more of the Psalms. That prayer that I just led us in, not, not the Lord's Prayer, but before that, was an adaptation of Psalm 57 here. And I would encourage you, you got your Bibles open, I'd encourage you to spend some time just reading through these Psalms and turning them into your own prayers and your own songs today. And so as we you know, close out our worship here, we're going to continue in song. And I want to invite you to, to worship God now through this wonderful hymn.
As we end our time of worship today, our corporate worship anyways, I want to just remind you of a few things uh, going on in the life of the church. We have our new Bible study that's starting tomorrow on Facebook, 52 Hebrew words every Christian should know. If you're interested in getting a part of that from wherever you're at, um, let me know in the comments below or send me an email at pastorcory at coopersvilleumc.org and we'll get you hooked up with that class. Also, don't forget our Be the Church Challenge this week to encourage someone who is faithfully leading and serving in this time to, to change the narrative that's going on in this world and show that instead of being people who are hateful, the church is people who are loving and we're encouragers. And so do that this week. Take some time to encourage people who are faithfully leading and serving. Please don't forget to give your offering today and to connect with us through our online connection card down in the, the comments section below. And as we close today, I'm going to um, close us with uh, a blessing. And this is the blessing. We've been doing this for the past few weeks, and it's a really great blessing. And I want you to receive this today as, as a blessing from God. This is from Numbers chapter 6. This is the priestly blessing of Aaron. May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace today and throughout the rest of your life. Amen. Be blessed, everyone. I hope that you have a great week and we'll see you soon. Bye now.